Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And uh, I'm really excited for today's guest because I think, I, I think Scott and I have the best passive income model, but I think our guest might be just nipping <laughs> at our he- heels. But before I introduce our guests, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host, Six Sigma Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the link. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I, I, I'm so excited because not only is it you on this podcast with me, but our guest today, he was actually on your podcast like way, way back in the day when I first got into the land investing business. And I was jealous of him. Do you know why? He's good looking. Well, uh, that too. Yeah. But I, I was really <laughs> jealous of him because I, I had just moved to Fort Myers and he lived in my hometown, basically in the Tampa area. And I'm like, you know what? When I grow up, I want to be like him and back in Tampa. <laughs> and so, you know, like he, he, uh, he's kind of like a little bit of a motivation for me. Like I can be like him one day. There we go. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think everybody wants to be like Kevin Bupp from <laughs> mobilehomeparkacademy.com. Uh, his podcast is huge. But if you don't know Kevin, and he was on the uh, Best Passive Income Model podcast as well, uh, Kevin has a uh, interesting story. He is uh, the, the owner of the Mobile Home Park Academy, which is the premier real estate education company in the country and, own, and one of only a, a select few that teach on the highly lucrative topic of mobile home park investing. Uh, founded by a team of nationally recognized mobile home park investors, he's developed the systems, the tools, the educational platform or coaching program to accelerate your path to success as a mobile home park investor. All right, well, Kevin, let's just get into it because- Let's do it. You know, the, the, the real question is, I mean, you're, you're, look, you're a Florida-based real estate investor, you're still an entrepreneur, You've got over, over 40 million in real estate transactions, right? Mm-hmm. Why teach anybody this stuff, Kevin? Like, like, I'm skeptical. If it's so great, why teach yeah. anybody? Yeah, fair enough. You know, there, there's, a, there's those that have this scarcity mentality, and there's those that have the uh, mentality of abundance that there's power in numbers. And by helping enough others, you know, help them reach their own successes, that more success will come our way. I mean, that's just how, that's how I think. And um, I've always had mentors that have helped me get into the different businesses that I've been in. And I've never seen a scarce mentality come their way, you know, come from them. And I've seen that them, they still thrive and they still, you know, buy a ton of properties and they help me along the way. And so I just always been raised that way. I mean, I was introduced to the business in that manner. And uh, that's just, it's my philosophy. I, I like helping others. And I think that there's, there's power in numbers as well. Um, you know, I think that there's just a, there's a collective dynamic that occurs when you teach others to do a particular business right. And it's the business that you're in. I think that there's just a, a synergy that occurs that I can't really explain. It just, it, we do more deals because we teach our methods. The Sim- simplest way to put it, Mark. Yeah, Scott and I are both shaking our heads because we get the yeah. same kind of scarcity mentality and the same skepticism and we answer it in almost I- the identical way. Yeah. And I like meeting people. I like meeting people that share the same passion anyway. So it's kind of cool to find others that have an interest in what I'm doing and to, to, to see them light up when they learn about this niche or to, you know, experience that life-changing moment when they buy that first mobile home park and they've literally replaced their entire full-time income. I mean, that's pretty cool. That's rewarding to me as well. So <laughs> lots yeah, of reasons yeah. why. Yeah, but Scott, when you hear about mobile home park investing, what's your first reaction to it? Uh, my first reaction is tenants, right? You know, like it's my first reaction. And then I, then I have flashbacks to the days where Kevin, I, I started off real estate investing with doing Lonnie deals. Okay. Oh, so I, I was out there like collecting the rent thinking I'm going to get, get killed over a uh, rent collection. And, uh, that's not any fun. Right. So in mm-hmm. a way that's kind of like what I like about land is that there's no, no tenants, uh, n- nothing there. And what I do like about mobile home parks though, is the fact that it's dirt at the end of the day. And that's mm-hmm. kind of like what Kevin teaches, you that's know, right. getting back to just getting to the dirt. Yeah. So we still have tenants, right? I mean, and don't get me wrong. I don't want everyone to think that mobile home parks are just renting the dirt. And that, that is in the perfect world. That's how these things were originally intended to be. 
but we do own a lot of rental units, not by choice in a lot of the communities that we, that we currently have under ownership, but we always try to sell those homes off. And, um, but the interesting thing is that we have tenants, but they own their home and it's very expensive to move that home. And so our collection rates are 99 plus percent each and every month because they, re- they run the risk of losing the most valuable asset that they probably own, which is their trailer. And uh, our turnover rates, just, it's very minimal. And so it's not, and we don't have to deal with the, 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 you know, the, the roof issues and the plumbing and the AC going bad. We don't have to deal with that because they own it. So it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, but you know, you know what I think of when I think about a mobile home park? What's that? Crime. Ooh. Drugs. Yeah, it's possible. Um, so why, why a mobile home park? Not, not, you know, some other kind of multi-tenant class of real estate. Yeah. Why, not, why not an apartment building? Yeah, we have to understand there's actually different classes of mobile home parks as well. I mean, like in apartment buildings, there's A class, which is the, the, the premier, and then there's D class, which is like pack heat if you want to go collect rent or do anything after, uh, after dark, right? And there's everything in between. Same thing with mobile home parks. It's actually more of a five, it's a five-star system. It's not an A to D grade. It's a five-star with one star being the equivalent of like a D grade apartment building and a five-star being like shuffleboard, three swimming pools, you know, full-time, uh, you know, program director, like really, really nice place. And so most of our parks fall in the two and a half to three star category. And so we're catering to, you know, good hardworking folks that just are looking for a clean, safe and quiet place to raise their family. And so not saying that some of the parks that we purchased haven't had a crime element, uh, but for the most part, we're very particular about the markets we buy in. And we're also very particular about school districts and such. And so we buy in markets that we know that if there is a bad element there, we know that there's plenty of good people just lining up waiting to get into a good place. And so it's, we know that we can easily kick the bad element out and replace it with good. Um, and so when you think about like you, the first thing that came to your mind, Mark was crime that does exist, but it, the same thing could be said about any apartment complex. I mean, if it's not run properly, any single family home rental, if it's not run properly, not vacant land, but just about any other type of income producing property could be classified as, you know, crimes, drugs, sex, rock and roll, everything else that comes along with it. But um, we really, we pride ourselves in providing a very, very clean, safe, quiet environment for families, you know, looking for an affordable place to live and raise their family. So we typically don't have to deal with that. So if Scott and I want to invest in a mobile home park, what is the very first step we should take? Just like anything, get educated. I mean, there's not a lot of sources of, of education. I'm not saying that because we offer education, but I mean, you really do. You have to get educated on the topic. I, um, you know, there's a lot of gotchas in the mobile home park space that don't necessarily exist. Buying an apartment or buying a shopping center or buying obviously vacant land that you guys do. Um, the infrastructure is a big thing in mobile home parks, and it's it's one of those things that if you don't understand what you're buying, you could literally be buying a dud that could sink your ship pretty quickly. Um, there are lots of parks out there that have private utility structures, meaning like they have wells and septics and wastewater treatment plants on site. And so you got to know what you're looking for. So get educated, make sure that you don't buy what looks as face value as a, as a good deal, as a good opportunity. And you find out that it's a complete done. It's a lemon and it's going to cost you your entire investment because we, I see it happen all the time. This is actually one niche where it's pretty easy to make a big mistake on buying the wrong park. Ouch. So how, yeah. okay. So let's say that you've got the right park. How do you even get the deal flow to even evaluate the parks? Yeah, there's numerous ways. I mean, there's, there's LoopNet, which is the largest commercial listing site. Um, I kind of call it like the broker's trash can because most stuff that makes it there has already been shopped a million times, but we actually have two deals on our board right now that are in contract that I found on LoopNet. It's the first two deals I've found like three years of searching LoopNet, but you still can find deals on LoopNet, just a few and far between. So that's one way. Uh, there's another website called the mobile home park store.com. It's basically the MLS for mobile home parks. That's all they sell on there. Again, some opportunities here and there, the, the guys, I know the guys that own the website, they have a big uh, investment business themselves and they tend to cherry pick things before they make it to the market. So a lot of the deals that make it up there have been picked over. Again, not that you can't comb through and find an opportunity, but so for us, um, if you're not going to buy from those websites and, and you're not going to utilize a broker, we go off market. Like that's how we, we find things by going off market. Like we, our systems of finding off market deals and strategically honing our focus in on certain markets and certain parks based on the length of ownership, based on who owns them, um, how old they are, um, you know, how they've been running the park. Like that's what we do. We go off market. And so there's a lot of, a lot of opportunity 
um, to buy from original owners. So there's a lot of mom and pops out there that own these things that, that built these parks 40 years ago and they're up there in age now. And so that is the best way, Mark, like the, all of our, all the deals on our board, only two are all market deals. All the rest are off market. The parks that we own today, 90% of those are off market. Like they weren't listed. They weren't through a broker. We went direct to owner. That is the best way, hands down to get, I mean, just what I consider the home runs. So Kevin, you know, let's say Scott and I go to a RIA meeting and we always joke mm -hmm. about this. If there's a hundred people in the RIA meeting, 99 of them are house flippers or wholesalers, mm -hmm. right? Scott and I would be the only land guys. You're the crazy guys. In the We're the crazy then, guys. Right? Now, are you, <laughs> now are, is it Scott and I, the land guy, you're the only mobile home park guy. How yeah. competitive yeah. is this and how big is the market? Um, yeah, if I went to a local RIA group, I would be probably the only mobile home park guy. There might be other guys that are like Lonnie dealers, like Scott had mentioned, um, that own a few mobile homes in various parks, but not really mobile home parks. And so, um, you know, I don't really know how to gauge like the competitiveness. I mean, I can tell you that it's much more mainstream now, uh, this business or this industry as it was when I got into it just, you know, five or six years ago. And I think that's because there's people like me out there talking about it. Uh, there's a couple other educators in the space that talk about it in a big way. But prior to them, I don't think many people really spoke about it. like the operators that are in the business. Maybe they thought it was like a good thing and they like they were close to the best with it. And they just kind of stayed under the radar. Um, and so it's competitive, but there's still a lot of opportunity. I mean, I can tell you that we send, we do a lot of direct mailers and we do cold calling on a regular basis. And we've got a database of about 3,500 parks that we've researched the markets. We know the parks. We know that more than likely if we got them at the right price, we would buy them. And we hit that list over and over and over again. And every time we hit it, we get different calls. We get different responses. And so and I can tell you that our students are hitting the same list and they're getting responses because they got the timing right. I mean, it's really the timing. They got their letter, their message in front of the people when they either need it or want to sell. And so I guess to answer your question, Mark, there's competition, but there's not, there's not too much competition to not consider getting into this niche. I mean, there's just not, and I'm, I'm proof of it. We're small, we're like small fish in a big pond still. Like we own a large, we own a fairly large number of parks, but we're still like very minuscule in the grand, you know, scheme of things. And we're still finding opportunities left and right. So. Scott Todd thoughts. Oh, your audio's off Scott. Oh, sorry. There it goes. Kevin, I like what you said about mailing to the list over and over and over and over again. I think that blows a lot of people away that, wait a minute, you can, you can mail to this, to the list and your students can mail to the list and we can all mail to the list and we can all still pull deals out of there. I mean, yeah. that, that really is the, the abundance mentality right there mm -hmm. at its core, because I mean, that's exactly what we do. We mail to the, to the list and we mail to the list and we mail to them again and again and again. And it's all about the timing. Yeah. It's I all like the, the timing. There's a like motivation the, in everyone's uh, life, right? I mean, the, everyone go, everyone hits a point in their life where they're motivated by something, you know, either their wife wants them to sell that property that's been draining their bank account or their health, you know, kicks in and something's going wrong or they're getting divorced and they're forced to sell whatever happens. But there's either a time where everyone either needs or wants to sell. I mean, it's not necessarily a big motivation where they have to sell, but it is like, I'm getting kind of tired and I'm not the age now. I've received these 80 letters from Kevin over the past five years on the 81st. You know, when I woke up this morning, my back hurt a little bit more than normal. I'm going to call him today. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's marketing. It's top of mind awareness. When that's they're it. ready, Kevin Bupp will be there. <laughs> you know, and it's, you know, but that's, that's where the consistency comes in. You show up, you show up, you show up. Yes. And they know, yes. okay, this, when I'm ready, Kevin's there for me. And you might right. get lucky the first girl. Like you, you know, I think the, the challenge that happens is some people, like they send a mailer out. And they get lucky in the first mailer and they'll get like, they'll pull a deal or two. They'll be like, wow, this really works. But then they'll send a second mailer and they won't get anything and they'll stop. They're like, well, this doesn't work anymore. I must've exhausted that list. <laughs> Whereas they should just yeah. stay consistent with it over and over again and uh, just keep working it. So yeah, I, I love Scott Todd's comment. Like how often do you go to the mailbox and get a credit card, uh, you know, offer solicitation letter. in the mail, offer letter in the mail, yeah. mm -hmm. like every day, right? I don't see the banks going under. Right, like yeah, they'll that's get a good you point. one day on the right day, that's and it. they keep they keep mailing, man. And like for me, it, it goes in the garbage can, garbage can, garbage can until like, holy cow, zero percent. Uh, maybe I want to buy something for I can pay off in twelve months, right? Like I, that, that's the mentality. 
That's it. But they don't yeah. stop mailing, man. I can't, I can't, even well, if I say don't mail me anymore, they still mail. Yeah. I mean, another example is like the tire, the tire uh, companies, like you know, they send out the, the pamphlets that all the other junk mail stuffed inside. Yeah, it's always yeah, got yeah. the tire coupons. I mean, we only need tires in our cars once every four years, right? If you're like yeah. an average driver, but they're sending that stuff out like once a month. I mean, if not more than that, but you know what? They get the timing right. The profit margins are probably really high in tires and they win. They win. If they, even if they did mail it a hundred times to us, they win when they come in to buy tires on that hundred first time that, that, uh, that I got that junk mail and I use that coupon. So yeah, no, it's, um, there's a lot of opportunity out there. It, it's interesting as well. I mentioned another thing about finding opportunities is that every, what I have found is that every owner that we, or every prospect responds to different media. Whereas we've had instances where we've cold called people and they've hung up on us like mad, angry, don't call me. And then like a month later, we'll send them a mailer, not, not really giving them a connection between the two and they'll call us from the mailer and be very polite and, you know, respond to our mailer and vice versa. That happens. And uh, so I think you really need to be, at least in our business, you need to be hitting them both ways. You need to be cold calling, you need to be mailing. And I can tell you that I'm a guy that if I got, I, I don't like being cold called. I, I screen my calls because I don't like being called off guard and I'm busy enough and I don't need like to be stuck in a conversation I wasn't expecting. I would rather control the moment and get a piece of mail and call it my leisure. Whereas like my grandfather, he's a grumpy old man that thinks that all the mail in his mailbox that, you know, isn't a personalized letter is junk mail. He gets really mad about it. He'd rather get a phone call. So you got to reach everyone in their own way and find out what works and just do both and overlap them. And uh, there's, I promise you that there is plenty of opportunity and uh, it only takes one deal in this business too. That's the thing. Most people, the average person, they're not looking to build a large portfolio. The one really good deal and we've got, and they don't have to be a huge deal either. They can be life changing, like, like replacement plus then some of like normal income, like yearly income. So anyway, I'm, I'm digressing here, but uh, you guys kind of get, you guys get my point. There's opportunity to answer Mark's original question. There's still opportunity out there for people. <laughs> there's a, there's opportunity. So tell us something we don't know about mobile home park investing because like I can, I mean, you've got so many podcasts. There's so much, there's so much information that you're giving. I mean, I'm looking at just the last three podcasts are like, it's like a, like a comfortable blanket, the dangers of paying face value for rent to own contracts that's solved how to avoid the mistake of buying a park without having the proper amount of operational capital left over to start running your new business. That's solved. <laughs> how to identify unstable income sources on a profit and loss statement and avoid overpaying for a mobile home park. Those three podcasts, it's, <laughs> it's, like, it's like swaddling me. So what don't, what don't we don't? What don't we what do we not know about mobile home park investing? That yeah, I mean, well, the, well, there's theory and then there's real life experience, right? I mean, so... I think that, I mean, you could, yeah, I could, I could preach, I could preach every day, you know, 24 seven. And um, I could tell everyone everything they need to know, but until they get boots in the ground and actually dive in feet first, um, every day is different in this business. I mean, I, I could preach from a book, but they're going to run into situations I might not have covered. So, I mean, I'll give you an example. There, there's a, and I, I mentioned that there's not understanding the infrastructure of a park and understanding what you have there in terms of like the utilities are concerned, like the water and the sewer um, could sink someone if they didn't know what to look for. And I'm going to give you a great example. It's a park that we own in Pennsylvania. Um, it's a smaller park, 41 spaces, but great deal. I mean, uh, it was brought to us by actually someone that is now our student, but they, they were always bringing us deals, you know, a couple of years back. And when you say great deal, can you define that real quickly for yeah, us? Yeah, I guess that, yeah, that's a good definition. I mean, so it's a great deal based on how we bought it and understanding what the upside was. And so, to others, it might not have been a great deal, but to us, we could see the future value and we could see the, the risk as well as the rewards associated with that. And so for us, it was a great deal. We were getting into it for very little money down. We paid 200 grand for it, which is unheard of. Um, 41 space park, great market, um, put 10% down uh, and then put another 30 grand in reserves for capital improvement. So we had 50 grand wrapped up into this thing. But here's the catch on this one. It was on uh, county water. So the water is provided by the county, but the sewer system was a master septic in the back of the park. So all the, it was on a hill and all the homes basically had a sewer line that flowed down into a master septic field. We did all of our phase one inspections, did, um, had a septic company come do an evaluation. Um, we are always concerned about private utilities. If there's not a backup plan, meaning like if we can't put another septic in, if we can't tie into the county sewer system, if there's not a backup plan and that thing fails, the whole park fails, it gets shut down. And so 
um, we were worried about that. That was our big worry. And we did everything we could to address the concerns and the worries. And we, we count, talked to the county, how much it would cost to connect in, got with engineers, knew our backup plan. Like, so like the worst case scenario happened, that things fails. We know what our backup plans. We know how much it's going to cost us to do it. Now, I will tell you that we were like, okay, worst case scenario, if it fails in five years, probably last 10, but if it happens in five, we know what to do. We just hopefully want to worry about it for five, six months in, it's failing. <laughs> and, uh, and we're talking a $300,000 price tag and about a year worth of engineering and approvals and permitting and all this crap that goes along with it. But we knew, we knew what the potential hazards of that deal were going into it. And so we planned for it. We knew, what, we knew how to get financing on this infrastructure improvement. We knew the engineers that we needed to work with. We knew what steps we needed to take. That same deal, someone, if someone wouldn't have planned for the worst because everything looked good on the front end. Septic in inspection came back fine. Like everything was working as it should, but we, there was an issue that it was underlying that no one noticed. And um, that deal right there could have easily sunk in a first time investor. If they wouldn't have really looked a little bit further ahead. Like what is the backup? What's the worst case scenario and how am I going to fix it? If it occurs, if and when it occurs. So um, the EPA got involved in that deal. So it wasn't just losing 50 grand that we put into it. The EPA got involved. Um, I mean, it was a big, it's a big deal. I mean, we've got a land, use, a land use attorney, environmental attorneys. I mean, so we got money wrapped up into this thing. It's fine because we planned for it, but that right there, that, that could literally just put someone out of business very quickly and probably bankrupt them personally even. So um, knowing the infrastructure is, uh, is, is just a big one that until you dive into this business, you just, theory doesn't matter. You got to dive in and actually get your feet dirty a little bit. Yeah, see Scott, this is why I, I think he's got the second best. <laughs> but with that deal with that deal as soon as we connect the city uh city water and uh we got some empty space and we'll fill in there i mean that deal all day every day and in the next year once we get stabilized and it's paying for itself now the cash flow that's in there now it's paying to maintain like these expenses we've been occurring with you know, so we're not making money right now at all but it's not coming out we're not making capital calls uh that deal it, it wouldn't stabilize be worth probably close to a, a million dollars i mean so we'll have Conservatively speaking, like probably 900. And so we were tied in, you know, we have 500 grand into it and um, we'll have, you know, a good $400,000 of equity in there. And, and it's, it's a significant amount of cash flow. The cash flow cash return will be, you know, close to 100%, probably exceed 100%. Wow. So, yeah. so if I'm an investor, yeah. that's a that's a nice return. So is how much of your time is spent looking for money and how much of your time is spent looking for deals? Yeah, well, we just launched a $10 million investment fund. Um, just literally about like three weeks ago. Uh, and uh, so we're, and we've got six parks in contract right now. And we've got a bunch more like kind of like teeing up. And so we're in a unique space right now that we we've never done before. I've never done a fund. And, um, and so we're raising uh, right now, we're raising uh, about 3 million to close the initial deals that we have in contract. And so we're in raise, uh, money raising mode right now. So we're, we're spending a lot of time doing that. I'm not involved in that too much. Um, I'm more on the deal acquisition side. And so like, that's, that's my, I've got a couple other partners. That's like my role in the company is, you know, knocking down doors and, you know, building relationships with these owners and bringing the deals through the door and basically taking them to the finish line, getting them closed and then passing them off to the, uh, the rest of the team. So I'm spending almost all my time finding deals. That's what I do. That's what I'm good at. We've all kind of determined what we're good at and I'm good at finding deals. Yeah. You know what I love about this model, Kevin, is that I think what we have is the gateway drug to getting <laughs> into larger yeah. deals like mobile yeah. home park because, um, it, you know, it's it, at the end of the day, if it's done right, you are just renting the dirt, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but the what, nice thing about it is, and we talk about this all the time, is that if you gave me $100 million tomorrow, right? I'd have a hell of a time deploying that much money right, into right. raw land. But if you give me $100 million tomorrow to invest in mobile home parks, I might be able to deploy that in a year or two, correct? Yeah, absolutely. That'd be a lot of parks, but yeah, absolutely. It'd be a lot easier than doing it into, you know, deploying it into raw land. You make a good point. Right, right. Scott Todd, what are you, what are you thinking, man? Your, 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 your head looks like it's about to spin. Wait, you're still, you're still on mute. Uh, here, I here keep hitting the button, sorry. The, uh, there's so much, you know, like there's so much opportunity around, not uh, d depending on whichever animal you like multifamily land, there's just so much sure. opportunity. And, you know, it's, it's really, it really goes to risk tolerance. Are you, are you one that's uh, able to sustain the, the stress, if you will, of preparing ahead for like the infrastructure issues? And if so, yeah. man, you know, you can, you can, 
you can learn those skills. I know you can. Um, but like Mark, like you said, land is a great gateway drug. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty risk, risk adverse. I'm very conservative as well. And, um, yeah, I, I think as long as you, you know what the risks are going into the opportunity, like, I mean, that's what we keep talking about here is like understanding like what, what potential risk you might be stepping into. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I, there's not many of our deals. Like the deal I just gave you the uh, information on that one in Pennsylvania, that like, that's a little bit of stress for us, but we kind of knew what was going to happen. We just didn't think it was going to happen as soon as it did. But um, I'm, I'm okay with the risk because the reward is, is well worth it on the back end. Um, and uh, maybe it's because I, I've got, I've got my, I got my feet wet. Like I've been doing this, I guess, full time investor since I was 20 years old. I'm 38. And most of the stuff I've bought over the years, whether it be single family or apartment buildings, have always been lower end type clientele. And so I've always catered to the affordable housing uh, side of things. And I'm just comfortable with the, with the, with the tenant base. I'm comfortable with the turnaround project. I've rehabbed hundreds of uh, hundreds of properties. And so I guess if you're cut, like that's the kind of deals we do, we do a lot of turnaround projects. And uh, so for me, actually, I don't really see them as risky. I actually see it as like a huge reward waiting on the back end. Uh, whereas others might, if they don't know that business well, or they don't understand you know, where the reward's at on the back end, they might, they might see it as a, as a big risk play and uh, not worth their time or energy. Yeah, so, Kevin, um, one of my mentors likes to say, sow the classes, live with the masses. There you go. I love that. Sow the masses, yep. live with the classes. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I love that. And um, so I don't know if that answered your question or not, Scott, but. Uh, good. All good. Yeah. All good. All right. So we're at that point now in the podcast, Kevin, my favorite point, where we get to put you on the spot. All right. Ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. Your mentorship has been invaluable. This, uh, this podcast, I, 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 I mean, if you're not listening to his, to Kevin's podcast, I don't know. You got You got to, you got to download that thing. I, I so, listen so to much it. value. I do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> I listen to both of them actually. Which, right. which one do you like more, Scott? Uh, I like the mobile home one better. All right. Yeah, that okay. one. I mean, you only listen to that podcast if you have even a little, I mean, you have to have a little bit of an interest in mobile home parks, I think, to listen to that right. show. That's all we talk about. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, so tip of the week. So the, is the tip of the week the website or a tip of the week and a website to go to? Is that Kevin, what you're saying? You're the, okay. you're the guest. You can, you can give yeah. whatever tip you want. Yeah. You know, we just started doing, and, I, and this is going to apply to those that have an interest, like whether they're going to buy raw land or they're going to buy mobile home parks or buy other types of real estate. I'm going to just make it the assumption that a portion of the audience that you have, Mark, is they're in a point where they're going to be buying real estate. Maybe they have to raise some private money, right? So they have to, they have to get their name out there and they have to position themselves as experts. Facebook Live, utilizing a service like we're talking on right now, Zoom, Zoom.us. I just started using Zoom, Mark, and it's wonderful. Uh, it's wonderful. And I think Facebook live. And so the, I guess it's two tips of the week, but uh, we're doing a lot of Facebook live stuff now through our mobile home park Academy. And I'm watching our numbers grow steadily. And our responses, I'm, I'm getting a lot of interest from investors that are watching our videos. And um, I think that there's a difference. Um, there's a situation that occurs through a visual contact with somebody than an audible contact. Like our podcasts are audible and we do have a lot of a big following and people can kind of um, get to know us through our voice. But when there's a voice and a, an image, like a digital image, like a video of somebody, I think the connection is much greater. And so anyway, that, that would be my tip of the week as far as technology would be concerned, would be Zoom because it's awesome. And then that ties directly into Facebook Live. Be doing Facebook Live videos. If you wanna be in this business, you wanna raise capital, you wanna put yourself out there as the industry expert, do Facebook live videos. And Mark, I think you guys probably do videos on other, I, th I don't know, what are some of the other video? Uh, I, I like BeLive.TV. I also use uh, Ecamm as okay. well. Well, uh, well not, not the actual tools, not the tools, but the, um, uh, this tw what's Twitter's, um, their video? Periscope. Oh, Periscope. 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 Like, are yeah. there any other ones that are bigger than Facebook Live? I think Facebook Live is like the place oh. now, right? You gotta be a Facebook Live. I mean, you okay. could go YouTube Live, you could go Periscope. Um, but if you're not, you know, a madman like Grant Cardone, just go to Facebook Live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, with Scott, Zoom, you can record the videos. You can do the Facebook Live, record the videos, and then upload them to YouTube, right? Yeah, correct. Get absolutely. But with, with with the Zoom piece, you can actually do Facebook Live and I think YouTube Live at the same time. I don't. 
Not that I know. No, now I, I, I don't think you can do it simultaneously. You, Maybe you can change do it, it. I simultaneously up. with OBS. Okay. Ah, uh, that's it. Yeah, OBS. So and I, I think Wirecast will let you do it too. Yeah, I think I think that we're still like in the very beginning stages of uh, of like video um, video marketing, and I think that it's you know it's it's going to catapult here in the next year or two, and it already has. I mean, it's just I mean, you look at Facebook streams now, like you know half of them are videos, you know, instead of like still photos. And so I think that's just a great way for those that are looking to get into this business, your business, Mark, my business, any real estate business where they need to actually put themselves out there as an expert, you know, potentially bring capital in. Cause that, for us, that's a big thing. Like we build a lot of relationships with our podcast and with our Academy and a lot of the capital sources that we have have come from that. And, um, and I think that you, you're trying to build a friendship, um, by putting yourself out there. And I think when people can see you and they can hear you put a face to a voice, I think the connection just goes so much farther. So anyway, that's my tip of the week. I don't know if that's a good word or not, but I, I think it's I'm great. Gonna stick to it. I, I love it. I think it's great. <laughs> Scott Todd. All right, Mark. Uh, you know, I like swim lanes. I like, uh, like flow charts, diagrams, all that stuff. Check out, uh, draw.io draw.io. I'm checking it out right now. And what you'll find is that it's a cool free tool that you can build your process maps, your swim lanes, your diagrams, your flow charts, everything and anything and everything it was actually given to me by, uh, by one of our coaching students. Hmm. And I love Whoa, it. Oh, this is cool. Yeah. To check that out. Draw.io. Look at Draw. this. They got basic Io. business charts, engineering, flow charts, mind maps, mock-ups, hmm. software. Design. So when you do it, Scott, which, which one are you using? So if you go down to, uh, let's see, if you go down to advanced, the swim lanes are in the advanced section. Wait, I don't see advanced. Uh, on the left side. I see basic business charts engineering. Uh, let me, here, let me create a new diagram. See, I'm, I'm okay, hold on. I'll hit create. It says authorized Dropbox. Allow. API authorization requests. Okay, now I'm in. Okay, so now you have a blank screen, I guess. Now I have, it says access denied, try again, what? Mark, I think I'm, I'm burning calories watching you walk as you speak. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, okay, so anyways, it yeah, says- The swim lanes are in advanced. From template URL or create? Create. Create. Okay, see it's not letting me do it. But I, I trust you. I believe yeah, you. It's there. It's, it's, it's there, there. I promise you. I love it. Okay. And it's like, I, it just got, says swim I, lanes. Yep. Okay. I've got cool. one other one I'm going to mention real quick. And it's, uh, you know, we're in the process in our business where we're, we're trying to d develop, like we have a lot of system and processes internally, but we're trying to like organize them into like a standard, standard operating procedure manual. And um, I found a website called Sweet Process and it's sweetprocess.com. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and great, it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. You it's should... Uh, we, uh, we, we also like, uh, process.st process street, process street, which yeah, is less that, money that by the way. Free, think, right? It's is free. It? Yeah. See, yeah. Kevin's like me. He loves to overpay for everything. Yeah. 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 Look, if it, but if it know, works, if it works, if it works for you, then I'm not too far. I'm not too far into it. Yeah. We just started like a week ago. So when you, when you have Kevin's, uh, net worth, it doesn't matter. You just, yeah, right. you just, you just get it done. <laughs> yeah. I wish, I wish Mark. I'm still trying to catch up to you guys. You guys have me 5,000 land transactions. Come on. You're way ahead of me. We, no, Kevin, we, we don't like to brag. <laughs> All right. I, you know, I'm still playing with this guy. Okay. I'm in advanced. Okay. And I just see a bunch of symbols. Right. What did now, I do wrong? Third, no, no. Third, uh, second row from the bottom in advanced. Oh, is, I see it. It's the swim lanes. You drag it over there and you can add more lanes. The pool. The pool. The yeah. Got it. You add the pool that brings in three lanes and you go down, you can add more lanes. I got four lanes. Yeah. Okay. Five lanes. How many lanes do you do? Uh, no more. I try to keep it on one page because then you can always add more pages. So uh, I try to keep it like, I think here you can go up to six lanes on one page. This is really geeky. And I love that I can just automatically save it to Dropbox. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah really yeah. cool. All right. Great tip. Out. And sweet process is a great tip as well. So uh, my tip of the week is going to make everyone a lot more money because it's mobilehomeparkacademy.com. Mobilehomeparkacademy.com. Um, 
and learn more about Kevin, his team, what he's doing. Uh, he's got a weekly podcast and then the 21 biggest mistakes. So, um, you know, go there. Purchasing a park that has a large number of homes owned by an outside third party investor and why this can be a huge risk. I mean, I'm getting an anxiety attack here. Kevin. I would say if, if, if anyone wants to learn about mobile home park investing, I would say the first place to start is our podcast. Cause like in the first 12 shows, we, we really dive into a very granular nature of like how we do market analysis, how we build our database, our direct mail processes, our cold calling process. I mean, everything uh, down to like the operational side, hiring and firing a new manager, training them. I mean like very in depth type stuff. Uh, not that all, all the other shows aren't in depth as well, but like the first 12 are like kind of like the core core modules of that podcast and then we've just built on it from there but there's a lot of information in there lots of information right. great great well i do want to just remind the listeners today's podcast is sponsored by posting domination.com forward slash the land geek and even kevin bupp is using it right kevin i am i, I am i i bought it about a week ago so i'm excited to scale up our craigslist business as far as selling off our like we want to own the land right and so we buy parks that have rental trailers in them and we don't want them. So we don't sell them off. And so we're going to use posting domination to blast the heck out of Craigslist with all of our trailers that are for sale. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Posting domination.com forward slash the land geek. Um, I want to thank all the listeners. I want to remind them the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Kevin Bupp from mobile home park academy.com to come on this podcast is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast, send us a screenshot of the review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit. Kevin Bupp, are we good? We're good, man. Thank Scott you, guys. Todd, are we good? We are good, Mark. Are you, I, I, you want to just skip it? Because like you're going to no, see we're, Kevin? We're skipping. All right. We don't want to freak Kevin out. All right, all right. I'll, what, what, I'll freak just, me out? What's happening? What are you guys about to do? What's one, about to happen? Two... two Three, let, let freedom ring. ring. Oh boy! <laughs> See, <laughs> yeah, that one was pretty good, though, Mark. No, that was pretty good, Kevin. Sometimes it gets super awkward. In oh, the right. it's it's actually awkward right now. Yeah, yeah. but anyway, We're, that's our that's our that's our fourth podcast. You just made it awkward. That's I think awesome. There's already one out there like that. All right, well, thanks, good guys. Deal, guys. Yeah, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Take care, All Kevin. Right. All right, take, take care. care. Bye, bye.